Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior, I'm happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, Praising my Savior all the day long. Praising my Savior all the day long. Welcome to New Life in Christ Christian Center broadcast. My name is Gerald Walton. I will be your host today. We welcome you this day, this beautiful day. Little chilly outside, but that's okay. This day is what the Lord made, and because of His grace and mercy, we live another day. So thank you for joining us. Uh, if you'd like to know more about New Life in Christ Christian Center bro uh, broadcast or our fellowship, you can reach us at 513 257-9121. Or you can call my cell number, 513-545-1705. New Life in Christ Christian Center is a fellowship where we lift up the name of Jesus and magnify his holy name and learn from him. Amen. Because the Bible says in him we live, move, and have our very being. So we're so blessed to serve the Lord and to serve the Lord with gladness. So you're welcome to call us for prayer or encouragement. We're there for you. We'll do our very best to serve you as unto the Lord. So today we have a great message. Before I get to the message today, I'd like to share with you a, a word of encouragement. This word of encouragement reads as follows in my notes. And it says, prayer links us to our loving Father, who is abounding and multiplying our lives to be conformed to Him. So prayer is a dialogue and also an express communication with the Father. And in doing so, we have life. This is like spiritual oxygen. We have life. Our relationship is being developed. Amen. And it's a wonderful time to be with the Lord in your prayer time. Prayer is not to be hard. It's supposed to be enjoyable because there's all types of prayer. There's the prayer of worship. There's the prayer of thanksgiving. There's the prayer of praise. There's the prayer of intercession. There's the prayer of, uh, uh, prayer of agreement. Yes, and there's the prayer of to pray for all that are in authority. Amen. So God has wants us to, to pray all prayer and to be watchful in prayer as well. 
So I hope this is an encouragement to you. I'll read it again. Prayer links us to our loving Father who is abounding and multiplying our lives to be conformed to Him. Amen. I hope this encourages you because your life is His life. His life is your life. His life, is your, his life is your life first, <laughs> and then your life in Him. So if we abide in Him and, our wor and His words abide in, his, in us, we shall ask what we will and it shall be given to us. But it's relationship, but that's what I'm talking about. A real, authentic, pure, loving relationship. Amen. Well, today's message, uh, I like to discuss this message that's on my heart. I believe it's a prophetic word in a day and time and season. So I'm going to obey what I believe what's on the heart of the Father and what he wants all humanity to know. Whether you're believers or not, he wants you to know this. So I'm so thankful to have the opportunity and the privilege of sharing this word with you. So the message today uh, on this day of our broadcast is love, love, love. I repeat, love, love, love. Three loves. <laughs> so we're going to talk about God's love. And uh, God's love, by the way, is called agape. The God kind of love, it comes from above. It comes out of God who is love. So this cannot be mistaken by human, human love or humanity love because all love is to come out of God who is love. So if it's not God's love, it's man's love. And man's love will fail them. But agape love is endless. And we're going to talk about agape, the God kind of love. And the three loves, love, love, love. So the first love we're going to take, uh, we're going to go to the passage of scripture here in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 40. In Jesus, amen, let's go up above, let's go to 34. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments, hang all the law and of the prophets. So love, love, love. That's what God is saying in the earth today, that we, his children, believers, are to expand, spread the love of God that is shed in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. It is love that conquers. It is love that's endless. It's love that's unfailing. And mankind, human, humanity needs that love. And God's love, the wonderful thing about God's love, it casts out fear, for there is no fear in perfect love. This perfect love, again, is agape. It's the highest kind of love. And you can read more about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It's a mature love. It's an everlasting love. It's an enduring love. It's a victorious love. It's an overcoming love when you have God's love in your heart. So how do we get God's love into our hearts? Because I know I've heard people say, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't forgive somebody. I can't. They, they were wrong. They wronged me. They hurt my feelings. They hurt me. They, they're called church hurts or individual hurts. But I would have you to know that Jesus died on the cross for all hurts, all sins, all sickness and disease, and he defeated it on the cross. So therefore, whom the Son set free, they're free indeed. But let's talk about 
how love begins. And the love that I'm getting ready to share with you, it not only, it not only begins, but it's a foundation. And it's in Christ that we have that foundation. So if we go to John 3, 16, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. And I just pray right now that the word of God will be planted in, in the viewers' hearts and that it germinate. This uncorruptible seed called the word of God, Jesus Christ, it germinates and produces forth fruit in your life, not just for you, but fruit in you to touch the lives of others. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let's go to John 3, 16. Amen. And it says, and I, oops, I'm in John chapter 14. Let me, let me slow my roll here. <laughs> John 3, 16. Thank you, Jesus. And it reads as follows. Amen. Isn't God good today? Yes, he is. So good. 316. Let's talk. Let's go up to verse 12. Okay. It says, Jesus is speaking. He says, if I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That man is Christ Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth, amen, in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he had, he, let's get, let's get this right, he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Amen. So for everyone that doeth hateth hate everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Now the light is Christ. Neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. And reproved is not a bad word. Reproved means apprehended and corrected. So when light comes, it dispels darkness and correction is to take its place, which is a good thing to be reproved. Amen. Apprehended or reprimanded, that is, so that you can learn that this is error and this is truth. Where the light is, there's truth, and where the light is, there's life. And that light and that life is Christ. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. So the foundation of this first love mentioned in Matthew 22 and 37, which is to love, thy, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, and all thy soul. Amen. This is the first, and, and to love thy neighbor as, as thyself. This is the first and great commandment. So you see the two go together. Love the Lord your God with all your, love the Lord the God, thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love thy, love thy neighbor as thyself. So God's love is an endless love. And his love gave something to us. He gave us his son. So love begins in your heart as God comes in your heart. Let him in your heart. And there's where the love of God begins. Amen. Now, grace and mercy is all over the world today. God's showing grace and mercy on people's lives. And I want to remind everybody that his judgment is just. God's judgment is just. 
and everyone will be accountable one day of that day of judgment. But his judgment is just. His judgment is true. Amen. But God's love begins in our heart when we receive his gift to us. Amen. And so, therefore, that which is born of the flesh, the natural is the natural, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That newness is God's love living on the inside of you. So in Romans 5 and 8 explains more about this endless love of Christ in you, the gift that God gave, which is his son to you. And I pray if you haven't received the gift of God, which is his son, Jesus Christ, my prayer is that you do so. For the day is the day of salvation, and you didn't just happen to turn to listen to this message. This message is for you. It's a good news message. It's the gospel. Amen. Christ came to save that which was lost and to set captives free from the bondage and slavery of sin. So that's where it says, whom the Son set free, they're free indeed. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom, there's liberty. And that's why Christ came as well, to set the captives free and to open the prison doors. Amen. Amen. So love begins with God, and that's why we should love him. He first loved us. But let's read in Romans chapter 5, verse 8. A good place to continue on this message. Love, love, love. God is saying in the world today, love, love, love. Love him with all your heart, all your mind and soul and strength. Love, your, love yourself as he has loved you and to love your neighbor even as you love yourself. And that's how it happens. It starts with God who is love. But in Romans chapter uh, 5, verse uh, 8, it reads as follows. If you have your Bibles, come along with me. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. We will read about God's love. And it says, But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were, were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more, verse 9, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. Amen. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life, the life that Jesus died on the cross for you. Amen. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Glory, hallelujah. Amen. So God commended his love toward us when we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. That's love, a demonstration of love. And because of the transgressions of Adam and Eve, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Christ was sent to help us be restored back to the Father through reconciling his life, giving his life, and paying the debt of sin of our life so that we could be set free and then begin to walk in the newness of life. And then if we go to uh, John chapter 15, the gospel of John chapter 15, verse 6 and 7, it says here, amen. If a man abide not in Jesus, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in Jesus, it says, if, he, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Amen. Amen. And then if we go to uh, verse uh, 10 
drop down to 10. It says, if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. So we see love comes from God and Christ demonstrated his love when he was here. He laid his life down. He obeyed the father and then he laid his life down for us. And that's the love of the father. He gave his only begotten son. So love enters in by us believing Christ as our Lord and Savior. And with that love, we can love ourselves more effectively. We can love ourselves and we can appreciate the set ourselves better by the love of God. Amen. So let's talk about loving yourself because loving yourself is so important when you love yourself. It's so important that you love yourself so that you can love others. Amen. And so when you love others, you can love yourself better because you have the same kind of love that you have that God gave you to love others. That's the blessing. That's how you can love others with God's love. That's why when you talk to people and they can't forgive, somebody for what they did, or they still walking in hurt. Christ died for those hurts on the cross. And that love, that power of that love, because we were all sinners, made sinners, because of Adam and Eve's transgression. But Christ comes in your heart. He gives you the power to love and forgive and to help others and to love them with the same kind of love God has given you because we are his offspring. Amen. So the second love is to love thyself. Some people have poor self images of themselves. Some people believe what happened to their past just ruined their whole life. But again, that's why Christ came to heal the brokenhearted, to set at liberty those who have been wounded and set the captives free. So loving yourself is because now you begin to see how God loves you. When you see how God loves you, man, you're going to be blessed. I mean, you're going to be like, wow, you love me? He's going to validate you. He's going to uh, 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 make you feel welcome. He's going he's gonna to tell you the truth. He's going to let you know I don't look on the outer. I look on the inner. Amen. And he's going to love you and love you some more. It's an endless love. So when you have that love of thyself, the second love I'm referring to, it is when you have his spirit in you to love. You will love yourself according to his love and not anybody else's love. It will either confirm or affirm what your parents did their best that they could do, but it's nothing like agape love. It's an endless love. It's how God created you in his image love and his likeness love. That's the truth. And so that uh, you will love yourself according to his love. And when you read the word of God, you'll find out what his love is all about. And I'm telling you, it's, it's liberating. It is the truth of his love for humanity and mankind. All intentions are love, love, love. All his intention is to save you, deliver you, and so that you can live forever with him and know him more than you, what you ever have. An endless love is an endless love. That's the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. So when you love yourself by knowing how God sees you, you're able to love yourself. You, you, you're going to be happy. You're going to be thankful. Oh, God loves me that much. He calls me beloved. He calls me precious. Precious in his sight. God don't make mistakes. That's why life is so important to God. He's, he's the God of life. He's the God of light. And my God, he's the God of love. Amen. Let's go to Genesis 1.27. Genesis 1 27. Read, we're going to read about how we're to better love ourselves and quit 
uh, badgering yourself. People be badgering us. They be regretting and I made a mistake and, and uh, they live in the past. And that's why 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. But in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, in the beginning, the book of Genesis, let's read what it says. In Genesis, in Genesis 1, 27, it reads as follows. Thank you, Lord, for the word. It reads, so God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he him, male and female, created he them. So God created you in his image. Now, the world will have their own opinion about you. I'm telling you, right, whether you're black, white, Chinese, you're too short, you're too small, you're too fat, you're too skinny, all that comes from man. They even name you, give you name. But if you read the word of God, he says, child, I have redeemed you. I've called you by name. Child, you are mine. And you've been brought with a price. And any man in Christ is a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. That's the blessing. And that's how you can love yourself as God loves you. Because you're his offspring. You're his child. Amen. And he's your father. And we are the family of God in whom all heaven and earth is named. Amen. That's what you hold on to. That's what, now, down in this world, you're going to be persecuted. You're going to be laughed at, talked about. Jesus was laughed at, talked about, lied to, persecuted. And he went before us so that we would know that we, so that he, he wanted us to know that we could talk to him. And he could talk to us. And he could sh tell us the truth so that we can continue to live for the glory of God. Continue to live in his love. Continue to pray. Continue in faith. Continue to stand so that God's will will be done to you in the earth and then forevermore, now and forever, amen. When Christ is in you, you have life and life more abundantly. This is the type of love that God wants us to understand, is to love him with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. So we must learn to love ourselves, amen. And so if we go to Romans 8, 28, or 8, 29, We'll see another passage of scripture why it's important to love yourself. Be thankful and grateful. And not live in regret and not be bad yourself, you know, through guilt and shame and all that stuff. That's nothing but the devil. God loves you, always has. He created you in his image. And then we're going to read here Romans 8, 29. Thank you, Jesus. In Romans 8, 29, it says here. Thank you, Jesus. It says here, mm, God is so good. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love, love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. So, oh, 29, for whom he did foreknow, that's you and I, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Out of Jesus, the lineage of the new birth in Christ, we are to grow in the image and the likeness of Christ. In other words, Christ is our example. And when you talk about that, we're talking about your behavior, your character, your conduct. Amen. We're to be holy because he was holy, amen. We should show kindness and we should show much love. Let's go to Ephesians that gives us an example of the love of Christ in us needs to continue to be perfected, which means continue to be mature. So we're here to do the Father's business and we're here to be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind and be conformed to the image of his son. Amen. Amen. He's bringing many sons to glory. Amen. So that's the lineage. We are out. He's the firstborn and we're the other sons that come out of that lineage, new birth image, family of God, both now and forevermore. Amen.
Boy, that's a blessing. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Let's read some more about learning how to love ourselves because that's how you can love your neighbor because you have received the truth of God, how much he loves you, and now you can give out that love to others with his love in you, the truth of his love in you. By you loving him more and more or loving him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, you're getting to know who your heavenly father is. That's what that's about. He wants you to know him. Amen. And therefore, when you know him, you'll know how much he loves you. And then now you can love your neighbor as yourself. But here in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. Thank you, Jesus. Chapter 4, 24, it says here, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, put away lying. Speak, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one of another. And it goes on and tells us about behavior, conduct, character. Do you know today people are snapping because they don't have Christ? They're getting, they don't have that perfect love that God gave through his son, Jesus. So people are angry and bitter and snapping and doing evil things. And they made their father the devil. But Christ came to reconcile us to God the Father who is love. And love conquers a multitude of sin. Love is the greatest. Hallelujah. Now faith, hope, charity, but the greatest of these three is charity. Love lives forever. And that's why it's so important to be born again. Born again of that love in you, that Christ love in you. And now you're able to love your neighbor, which is everybody. And Jesus even said, love your enemies and do good to those who despitefully use you. Those are your neighbors. And pray for them. And one man asked Jesus, he said, how many times shall you forgive a man? The man said, seven times Jesus? Jesus said, 70 times seven. What was Jesus saying? He said, forgiveness is an act of love. And it comes from above. Amen. This love is from above that I'm talking about today. Love, love, love. The Lord is saying, love, love, love. Love him. Get to know him. Love him and he'll show you how much he loves you and then love yourself and then go and love your neighbor. Go love, go find some people to love on. That's what God is saying to his children. Go find some people. Go find some people. Down the street, you can start right on your street. Hey, I just want to let you know I appreciate you as my neighbor. Hi, how are you doing? How's everything going? Everything's all right? Acts of love, acts of kindness, kindness comes from love. Patience comes from love. Long-suffering comes out of love. Amen. It comes out of the attribute of our Father who is love. And the royal law is to love thy neighbor as thyself. Because this is the kingdom of God. This is talking about everlasting kingdom. On earth, as it is in heaven, this is what we're talking about. This kind of love. Agape love. The greatest. The most powerful thing on earth is God's love. So we don't need to get so busy, busy, busy and forget about how much God loves you and how much you need to know how much he loves you. So then you can love him with all your heart, mind and soul and strength. And then you're going to learn that you're his offspring and his love is in you and how much he loves you. And then you're able to go and love your neighbor. Amen. Love thy neighbor. Amen. As thyself. So last love is to love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. <laughs> they are a blessing. You are no closer to God than your neighbor. You're no closer to God by the person where you work at next to you. How can you say you hate a person, the Bible says, and say you love God? That's not getting up to heaven. Not that you, there, no, there's no hate like that. So we must have the love of Christ in us. I have a real precious brother say, I love you with the love of Christ. That's how you love people. 
not in your own strength because you probably can't do it. But if you understand the cross and what he's done for you and how much he loves not only you, but others. Oh, and you walking in with that love and sharing that love, 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 love. Oh, my goodness. This world will be changed upside down. All this unforgiveness and vengeance is of the devil. When we receive Christ and repent it and turn to him, and that's very important, then we turn to him so we can understand and receive his love and walk in that love and learn how to love yourself and then love your neighbor as thyself. Do it, that means do unto others as you want others to do unto you. So you can love your neighbor, which is humanity, Oh, yes, you can love your neighbor, humanity, with God's love on the inside of you. That's how you do it. It's not opinionated love. It's not what you think. It's what God says. We are commanded to love. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. Thank you, Jesus. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. Let's read some more about God's love in the kingdom of our God. Amen. Because that's where it's eternal. We're talking about agape that's eternal. Amen. And in Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, it reads as follows. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy, beloved vows of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness and longsuffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel, against any, even as Christ forgave you, so do you. And above all these things, put on charity, which is love, which is the bond of perfectness. Amen. So we put on love and walk in that love. Now, how do you put on love? You put on the divine nature and the example of Christ. You take off all this fleshly bad attitudes and, and all what you learn in the world and you know, and, and you put on Christ and it says it here. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. That's how God sees you. Elect of God, elected, selected, approved of God. When you're a child of God, so you will see yourself differently because you see, my God, God loves me. It's a privilege and a blessing and an honor. Because it comes from him straight from above. Amen. From the father of lights. Amen. So this is how we love our neighbor. This is just not how you love your church and members of your church family. No, that's not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is a principle of God's love. It's the royal law. And it means to love one another and to love thy neighbor as thyself. On earth, that prayer, the Lord's prayer, Lord, on earth as it is in heaven, that's referring to you. To, to bring love of God, bring God's love down in the earth realm. That's what's needed. It's not needed in heaven. Heaven is, my goodness, and I don't know much about it, but he wants his children to walk in love and show the world that this is love. This is love. Instead of the world being afraid, angry, bitter, uh, uh, revengeful, jealousy, contentment, you know, quarreling, contention, arguing and fighting over place, over food. My God, it's hedonistic, hedonistic. So God wants us to walk in perfect love because perfect love, his love, cast out fear and by so people will know that we are his disciples. We are followers of Christ, indeed. Amen. So this is what I wanted to share with you today, briefly, but I believe God is saying it. Love, love, love. Again, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. And then love, thy, love thyself with his love. That's second love. And that third love is to love thy neighbor as thyself. And as you love yourself, how God loves you, you can love your neighbor as thyself. You can do unto others as you want others to do unto you because you know God's love. 
and you can introduce people to God's love in the cities, in the highways, in the byways, in the marketplace. Let that love, let that light shine because that's that light shining. The Lord said, arise and shine for the light has come. Light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. So love, love, love. I hope this blessed you. Have a blessed day until we meet again. This is an awesome time. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Now, love does take, it does take some things to have love. It's called long suffering. But the good news, you're built for it. The truth of it, you are built for it. Because Christ is in you. And he's building himself in you. So believe and receive and give God thanks and go on and be about your father's business and love on some folks. And do, us to, do unto others as others would do unto you. Have a blessed day until we meet again.